Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for Journaling on a Budget. We are going to start a new series. I'm calling this Starting from Scratch, the $25 Journal Challenge. And this is going to be where I start completely from scratch, not using anything that I have in my home. Scissors, glue, you name it, I'm not adding it in. Because some people really haven't started. Some people don't have these things. They may have some things, but not others. So I'm going to make a journal. I have used $25 to buy the things that I need that I think will make a nice journal, complete start to finish, and I've spent $25 mostly at the thrift store, but also at the Dollar Tree and at Walmart for the things that I couldn't get at the Dollar Tree. So um, what I did was I went to the secondhand store and I went with a list. I thought, what types of things do I need to make a journal? And so I made my list and I thought I need paper so I can get that with books, miscellaneous paper that they have there, music books, music sheets. I needed some kind of fabric, maybe something tulle, sparkly, white cotton for sure because, you know, you can do so much with white cotton, you can change it. And I thought, you know, maybe some beads, some stickers, and in order to get stickers, like maybe labels, that type of thing where I can make my own, fibers like yarn and that type of thing, and um, I needed a book cover. And so looking for something for a book cover when I was looking for my books. Um, plastic sleeves like photo sleeves or something to have a little bit of plastic in our stash some markers for color and some envelopes um, for lots of different things to keep some of our makes in and to use in our journal so we're going to not only just make a journal but we'll also make things to go along with making a journal and um, so I'm going to show you what I did um, I, I kept all of my receipts I added them all up and I did go over I spent $25.16 um, on this new journal that we are going to make. And I'm going to show you what I got, and then I'm going to show you how I cheated at the end. So, um, but, so just to start with, I started by looking at books. That was my, I thought, you know, we're going to need a cover, and we're going to need paper, and that's going to be, without a cover and paper, we can't do much um, in making a journal. So the first one that I got was, this is a shorthand book. And so I love the cover on this. Now, this cover's got, you know, writing on it. And I thought, well, I could kind of cover that up. Or maybe I could figure out how to get it off. I don't think so. But the back cover is completely plain. This, these sheets of paper are, um, letter size paper which means that's the size of this cover and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cover and I'm going to cut it in half this is going to be the front and the back of my journal and then I will add a cardboard spine um, and so this is what I'm going to use for my cover on top of that shorthand is really quite cool and so it's it's like, and I know that being that this is a training book on how to do shorthand, if someone knows how to read shorthand, I'm pretty sure there won't be there won't be anything bad in here that they're going to be reading, um, which is one thing you have to think about with your books is what kind of words are going to be on the pages. So um, so I thought all of these pages will be great to use in embellishments and as backing paper because they are. You know, they're just really neat to look at. So so this was the first book that I got. And the thing is, I spent two hours at the secondhand store. My husband stayed with Papa, and he said, just go have a good time. You have to look. You have to, you know, and the thing is, you might have to make a couple of trips. I came home with a few dollars left and then wound up having to go back to the store after I figured out what I was going to spend at $3 left. And I came back to figure out what I was going to spend those $3 on. But, um... So this is what I got. I got it for the paper inside, and I got it for my book cover. So that took care of those two things. I thought I wanted color, and so I, I looked for a flower book. Now, this is a Reader's Digest flower book. Um, Time Life makes a great flower book, but I couldn't find any of those. And I found some others that just didn't do. It was like, no, I'll go back, you know, like maybe another week, and I'll look again for, for my colored flowers. But then I found this book. And the thing that I like when I'm looking for, 
flower books is. I like my flowers to be on a white background instead of a busy background because then I can cut around them and leave just a little bit of white. I don't have to worry about the perfect fussy cutting and I like the way that little bit of white looks on the back of the flowers, behind the flowers. And you can always cut it off later if you want to get rid of that white. But this book did have all of these beautiful flowers with the white behind them. So I'll sit in the evenings and I'll start cutting out these flowers and just keep them in one of my envelopes. Um, so that, and there's lots of leaves and that type of thing. So I'll have an envelope for flowers and an envelope for leaves, but um, that's what I'll do. And you know, see now this is pretty and it would make a pretty tag. Um, but the thing is, I didn't want my whole book to look like this. And a lot of the books I was looking at did look like that. And they had pretty, where I thought, well, I could use that for a tag. I could use it for a pocket. But I really wanted some that I could use for embellishments. And so that's why I wanted some that had some with the white backing behind the flowers so that I could cut out the flowers and glue those onto my tags and my embellishments. So that's why I chose this book. Now you could get a bird book, an animal book, a kid's book, something with some color to put in your journal. Whoops. Okay, and then the last... I think this is the last book I got, and I got a dictionary. And um, this dictionary, she sold it to me for 50 cents instead of a dollar, because hardbacks are a dollar, but this one was in such bad shape that she gave it to me for 50 cents. And the reason that I like um, dictionaries, sorry about that, um, is because you can get some really cool little embellishments out of them. Now, I've already been kind of cutting out here is a honeycomb and then I also cut out if I could I cut out the description for them because I might want to use it with them so here is a little hummingbird and this one is a horsefly I'm not so sure that I would use his description it says a fly that bites horses you can tell how old this dictionary is because horseflies <laughs> we raised our kids on a farm and horseflies don't just bite horses um, there's an hourglass and the description for that. Now see, I'm going to back these on some paper. Maybe some paper out of my, maybe some of the darker pages out of my flower book so that they'll have a darker edge around them. But, um, you know, so that is what I did here. We've got a hornet and look at the hoop skirt. Isn't she cute? And also you can color them. You don't have to leave them black and white. I kind of like them black and white. And there's the description for my honeycomb. So that is why I like dictionaries, because you can get all of these little bits that you can make into your own fake postage stamps. You can put them on a tag. Um, you can put them on a page. You can cut out just the word. Cut out the description for love. Or, or here's humor on the top of this page. You can cut out the word for humor and put it on a funny page that you're putting in your book. So that's why I like dictionaries. And so... I got that dictionary and then I was um, next to that was where the kids games were and I found this henna art and I opened it up and went mm -hmm. you know there's not much in there and even when I opened it up it's like I don't know but then I got to thinking it's got this pattern book in it so this pattern book shows you ways to doodle or to do the henna, I guess. And then it also has all of these pretty designs. I can cut these out and use them on the edge of a page. It also has the book telling you all about henna, and which also has some pretty pictures in it. And um, so there's that. There is a piece of carbon paper. These are little plastic, I thought they were gloves. Um, but they're not. It's like a little plastic, um, like what you do cake decorating with. So you just, just cut off the very tip, and then you can, like, draw with your henna ink, I guess they would call it. But, um, so it's got those. And we'll just leave that like that. And then it has the dye for the henna. Um, and so I thought, well, that will be great because I can use that to dye paper. And then it also has this little squeeze bottle. So you're not going to find exactly these things because they're coming from the secondhand store. But you'll be able to find things that other people are not going to find. And that's going to make your journal 
unique for you. So I'm just giving you ideas on how to look at things and on the fact that if you don't have anything at all and you're starting from scratch, you can do a project. And if you don't have $25 to spend right away, then, you know, you just can spend $5 and $5, you know, pick up your books first so that you can make your cover and your pages and that type of thing. So, and then I got these cards and they came with envelopes. So I have some envelopes here and these are like with the flap, um, flap on them. And then these are like to make your own cards. So it comes with this vellum piece and this vellum piece and a ribbon. And so that's really cool. So now I have those to use for different things on my project. And like I said, you're going to find your own unique things. You might find some really cool things that I don't have. And then I got this. These are accounts payable labels. And some of these things were on sale for half price even um, because of the day. I don't, I don't know which ones were. She was just ringing things up and it actually came to a little less than I thought it was going to. And she said, oh no, some of them were on half price. So, um, but so these labels... I have label of this size, and there are some, and I can use these to make stickers. I can use them to stick things together. There's one like that, and I think there was like one more that was longer. Yep, and then this one is even longer. And so I can like color this whole page and then use them. I can, you know, just do them one at a time. And, you know, it's just nice to kind of have stickers. I can doodle on them. I can use the, the henna art um, where it shows how to doodle. But so you didn't get the henna bar, art on how to doodle. Um, YouTube has tons of videos on how to doodle. So, you know, if you didn't get that, then you can just go on YouTube and look at how to doodle and make some doodle stamps that you can use and then put them where you want them, when you want them, and you don't have to doodle right on the page that you just did and you really love it and then you start to doodle on it and you don't like what you did anymore. And then I got this one in the kids department also. And this was Little Fashion Dolls. And it's like, okay, this is hard plastic. At first when I picked it up, I thought, eh, no. Because all of the pages, I thought, oh, there's pages in there. But they're all colored on. But then I got to thinking, number one, the backside's not colored on, but you can kind of see through where they've colored it. So maybe I'll use those, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll use parts of those, like for the back of a tag. Here, you can see this whole dress here, but there's enough white paper here to put on the back of a tag. So it's like, okay, so there is some paper. That's a nice hard plastic front. And it had these stencils. Now, these stencils are not necessarily something that I might use in my journal. Because, see, these are just like some dresses. And these are more clothes. These are like the pants and top separate. And more clothes and more clothes and I think that these are accessories and some of the accessories the shapes might be kind of fun to use but this is I got this for 99 cents unless it was one of the things oh maybe kids I think it was kids crafts were on or kids stuff was on sale so I think I paid 50 cents for this but this was the page that I fell in love with. Love the little top hat. But look at butterflies and a dragonfly, flowers, hearts, bow ties, regular bows. And so I even thought for 99 cents it was kind of cool to have that along with the other things that were here. And so I picked that up. It even has a pink crayon. And underneath this piece of plastic, it has some sparkly... It's got a sparkly bit. I can peel that out of there, take the plastic off and peel that off and be able to use that in little bits throughout my journal because I wanted sparklies and I didn't get any. Well, I did, but I didn't. I also got this. This is just a sheer curtain. 
It's just a panel curtain, so it's a square piece of fabric. I loved the fact that it was see-through and white, so I can make it any color I want. And I got this um, pillowcase, because pillowcases were 49 cents. And so this had this beautiful eyelet trim on the edge, and then all of this white cotton fabric. I knew that I wanted white cotton fabric for sure, because I use that to make ribbons and that type of thing. And so I was hoping that with what I got, I'll be able to do that. Um, and, and I got the curtain for 49 cents also. And then I got this whole bag of fibers. And I think the fibers were on sale half price too, so that made that one a dollar. And it just, you know, it does kind of pay to look and see what they have on sale that day. I got this little bag of lace. It's not a ton of lace, but you know what? We're making a journal. You don't need a ton of lace. So there were three different styles in here, and these are something that someone pulled off of a dress or something. And so they've already done that work for me. And then there's a nice cream colored. These are cuffs. Well, there's I think there's only one, but this was a cuff off of something. And so you have this little lace at the top, you've got this lace in the middle, and then you've got this large lace at the bottom. And you just take the stitching out so that those pieces come apart and you'll have three different pieces of lace to use on your project. Or you can leave it all together. I'm going to stop here for just a second and come right back because I'm going to need to upload this and it's getting too long. Okay, I'm back. And then also in the fibers department, I got this bag of miscellaneous stuff that they threw in there. So look at those types of things when they just throw a bunch of stuff together. Here are some buttons. It looks like it's supposed to be, well, it says it's three button covers. It's only two. So here's the two button covers. You put fabric on them, and then, but there's only one back to actually make it a button. But I could cut a piece of cardboard for the other one to get the fabric to stay around there and stuff some cardboard in the back. And that is the one thing for this series that we are going to use is you can use, um, we're going to use junk from the house, not, um, not items. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, so I got this turquoise colored ribbon. And this is blue. It's got little snowflakes with a little touch of glitter in the middle of each one, which gives me something else that's a little blingy. I've got this cording, which is a really fat cord, um, but you can take it apart. You wind up with four gold cords, two of these cream colored cords, and the fact that when you, I didn't do this on purpose, but when I was trying to get them apart, some of the string came off. And it's really curly and cute, so maybe I'll use something like that. And then this little, um, this is a quilting stencil, and it's for mini lot border, whatever that means. But it's really quite cool. It's got ovals and little rectangles, and so that, that will be fun to play with. And this whole bag was 49 cents, so, you know, you have to kind of look. They had some things in there that I thought were way too expensive. It was like, ooh, I want that, and then I looked, and it was like $3. Well, on a $25 budget, and we have to get everything that we need for our journal, um, I couldn't really pay $3 for much of anything. So, and then I got a photo sleeve, and this one is, it's a nice, heavy plastic. It's got the white divider in the middle, and then clear on the other side also. So that just gives me something if I want to make a stencil or something, or if I want just something to tuck into my journal and put a tag or something in there. You know, just I just wanted to have that. I thought it would be something good to have. And then it also has this cover, um, you know, which we could use for something. So we got that. And then I got this. And this was... Um, two dollars. It was a dollar ninety nine. It said two ninety nine on there, and I really wasn't sure. And she said, "No, no, it's just a dollar ninety nine. But inside here is a whole thing of ladybug paper. So there's more paper, and then this is banner paper. So this is just paper that is regular size, and then it's just hooked together. So you could make a kid's banner, kind of like the old printer paper that had the holes on the side. Um, but this is a nice weight paper. So this will make a nice base for our book. But even at that, you know, you could, if, if you can't find anything thicker, and that's not really that much thicker. It's just regular copy paper, um, but it's not like super thin. And so 
And so I got that. So I was lucky to find that. And a lot of times this looks almost like it's full. A lot of times you're going to find it and it's only going to maybe have a little bit of paper and you're like, eh. But think about it. How much paper do you really need to make a journal? Um, you know, if you put in, let's say, two signatures with four pages in each, that's eight pieces of paper that you need. And with those four pieces of paper, when you fold them in half, they become 16. Because now when you fold them in half, you have eight pages and each page has two sides. So that's 16 and 16, 32 pages in your journal for eight pieces of paper. So you don't have to have a ton of everything. Okay, I'm gonna show you now where I cheated. At the, at the store, one of the things that I had was bling, and I couldn't find any, and the easiest place that I usually find bling is on a fancy dress. So, the fancy dresses are $5, but this dress has been there for a really long time. And um, I noticed that, because I've looked at it before, I don't know that it was ripped before, but the, the whole bottom part is ripped out and the zipper is broken. So this is just wide open in the back. It's broken. It's been there forever. So I asked the girl if she would take $2 and she said yes. And I bought it because I wanted bling and I couldn't find any. After I got home, there were other things that I really thought I needed, and the fact that I looked at it, and it was like, okay, it was right towards the end, I really wanted some bling, it was the last thing I was looking for, and she gave it to me for $2, so I bought it. I would have bought it for $2 anyways for my art room, and I will sit in the evening, because this whole thing is covered with, with bugle beads. So I will sit, and sequins, and some little gold beads. So I will sit, and I will take these out, because they were definitely worth the two dollars but i don't need these for this series i'm not going to put black in here i might use a few of the gold sequins but you know i don't use sequins a lot anyways so because i had bling on my list and i didn't have any yet i paid two dollars for this dress that was a mistake so if you're really super on a budget now i'm going to put this in my art room i took the two dollars off of my list and I am going to keep it because you can't return things there. But, um, and, and I'm not sorry that I bought it, but I'm sorry that I bought it if I only had $25 budget because it's not going to work really in my journal. Also, what I bought was I bought this um, little date stamp. It's just the months of the year and it goes up to um, 2006, I think, but um, 2007. But I like these stamps, and I think they're fun to use. And I thought, well, that would be fun to use. Okay. We don't have an ink pad. So what am I going to use it with? So I took these two things off of what I had spent at the um, secondhand store and put the $3 into my budget for buying the staples. Um, so I did cheat, and I wanted you to know that so that, you know, if, if you really made a mistake and you can afford to fix it I did and then I went to Walmart in the Dollar Tree and got the rest of my supplies because you can't necessarily get everything at a secondhand store but you can get everything reasonable so the things that I bought at the Dollar Tree number one you have to have them a pair of scissors like I said I'm starting from scratch I'm not using anything other than a pen and a pencil I can use not markers but a pen and a pencil and um, and then junk, like cardboard, um, you know, anything that would basically, you could throw it away or you would maybe throw it away, um, those types of things, but not anything that like, oh, I just have that. Now, if you're playing along and you have these things, by all means, don't go buy something that you don't need. But I wanted to show that, that we can do this from scratch for those who don't have anything and who say, well, I don't even have a pair of scissors. Now, most people do, but you know, there have been times in my life I couldn't find a pair of scissors in my home. So so I bought a pair of scissors. I bought some paintbrushes. This is one of the things that I bought with the $3 that I returned. I bought paintbrushes with that $3. I bought sponges with that $3. And I bought a tub. I'll show you in a minute. Just a, a tub to kind of put all this stuff in. And then also to use it to dye my paper and that type of thing. I bought at the Dollar Tree, I bought these paints because I knew we needed color and I bought these washable markers 
so that we can use those to make watercolor paper and we can use those to edge things and that type of thing. Oh, I also got this at the um, secondhand store for a dime because I needed a ruler. I couldn't get, usually Dollar Tree has these knives, but they didn't have any and the girl didn't know if they'd be getting them back or not. So I did buy this at Walmart. It was $1.83, but I got two of them, a bigger one and a smaller one. But so I got that and I also got this washable school paint at the Dollar Tree. I got this for water glue and for gluing, but mostly for water glue. And then I got tacky glue at the Dollar Tree for, um, for actually gluing things. A bottle of white paint. I can mix this, put a little bit of color in it if I need to, but really you, you kind of need some white paint. That, that's, that's kind of a staple that you really need to have. Now, I got a sewing kit so that I would have a needle and a thread. It's got needle, thread, it's got some pins in here, and um, but the needle and thread, I thought, you know, there are gonna be times we're gonna need that. We do have fabric, so I got that. At the Dollar Tree, I bought this paper tape. Now, this is called paper tape because it really is paper. Um, and so it's very easy to rip. This makes great washi tape, but you can also use it to tape things together. It's pretty sticky. Um, but it's just made out of paper and so this is a really good tape to have as a first tape um, oh, I forgot it doesn't really stick to itself because it's kind of like tape on one side oh there we go it did so I got some paper tape so that we could make washi tape and so that we could tape things together I wanted the paper tape more than I wanted like clear tape because clear tape I could tape things down but I can't use it to make washi tape I got this at Walmart because the Dollar Tree didn't have any fun foam. So I got some fun foam for 48 cents. And then the tub I was talking about that I got at the Dollar Tree was just one of these tubs. And I'm just using that to put everything in. And also, um, I'll get some boxes and stuff also to put these things in. Just just old boxes out of the back room. But um, I want to be able to dye paper. And so, not everybody has one of these tubs. And that's definitely one thing that I thought, well, if they watch me dye paper, and they wanted to dye paper, a tub is a, it's a good thing to have. So, these are the different things that I have bought with my 25, well, $25 and 16 cents. And I am going to now start a new journal, and I'm not going to use anything but what I got at the second hand store in the Dollar Tree, what I got with my $25. The one thing I have to say is these fibers here and, um, oh, and the ones in here, I don't know if they came from the same person or not, but they kind of have the same colors to them. And this also, I did not do that on purpose. Um, I didn't notice it actually till I was checking out and, it, and as she was going through, it was like, oh, those kind of match. So that was kind of cool. And that might be something you want to think about because that was the one thing with my bling, black. Am I really going to use black bling? I really am not. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't use, I use black for certain things, but I don't know that I've ever used black in a journal. So now you might enjoy using black in a journal. So, you know, that might have been perfect for you to get and you might want to use that. But I wanted to let you know that I did cheat and I did take those off my list and use that money to buy something else. So that's it. This is going to be our new series. The next, um, the next video is going to be on making the cover. And, or maybe we'll just make some embellishments first. We'll see. It'll either be making the cover or making some embellishments, and then we'll go from there. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I just wanted to be able to show you, and I know $25 is not a tiny amount of money, but when, starting from scratch, and like I said, you can spread it out over a few weeks so that you know you actually can do this and some of these things you'll probably maybe have scissors in your house you'll maybe have a ruler in your house i just wanted to show if you don't have anything it's still possible if you just look for the different things that you need don't overdo it i could have bought six flower books you know there was this one that i really liked with the white backings but there was a bunch of them with pretty like whole pages and stuff 
don't overdo it. You only need a little bit. Like I said, eight pieces of paper will make a nice journal, a 32 page journal with eight pieces of paper. So, and, and the other thing, one other thing, especially if you're just starting out books, when you buy books and it may sound funny, but Smell them before you buy them. You want to make sure that they don't smell all musty. This one has a touch of must smell to it, not much. And I'm only using, you know, and I'm going to let it air out. If they really stink, you can't get that smell away. This one just barely smells, it smells kind of old. Um, but definitely I will be able to lay this out, you know, let it air out, and it will, and it should be just fine. Um, but yeah, that is something some books really smell bad and that's really hard to get rid of. So thank you again for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you like this new series and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.